Welcome. I'll be talking about hypertensive emergencies today. What is hypertensive emergency? Hypertensive emergency is a condition where you have high blood pressure with signs or symptoms of acute ongoing target organ damage. The next thing is we have to differentiate between emergency versus urgency. The uh, reason is hypertensive emergency has to be managed in an ICU while urgency can, made, can be managed in an outpatient or an IP basis. The antihypertensive agents used for emergency are it has to be parenteral and then later it can be changed over to oral. While in urgency, it's, we can start off with oral agents. The BP lowering goals will change for emergency and urgency. So what is the difference between emergency and urgency? Urgency is a condition where you have high blood pressure without signs or symptoms of ongoing target organ damage. Now next thing, who are the patients who are susceptible to develop hypertensive emergency? It can develop in patients with known pre-existing hypertension, unknown pre-existing hypertension or even if the patient's blood pressure was normal. What are some of the, con some of the conditions which come under hypertensive emergency? One is ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, head trauma, hypertensive encephalopathy, acute heart failure, acute coronary syndrome, acute aortic dissection, acute kidney injury, hypertensive emergency during pregnancy. These are some of the conditions which come under hypertensive emergency. Now when you have a patient who presents with hypertensive emergency in the emergency room, we have to take a very focused history and physical examination. The history and physical examination is targeted at finding out the target organ damage and any susceptible or any reasons for the patient to develop hypertensive emergency. So one, we look for any evidence of target organ damage, one is that is neurological, either in the form of acute head injury or trauma. A hypertensive encephalopathy patient can have acute uh, generalized neurological symptoms such as agitation, delirium, stupor, seizures or visual disturbances. While in a patient with hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke, they can have focal neural symptoms like uh, unilateral weakness. Grade 3 or grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy on fundus examination that is hemorrhages exudates with grade 3 or papilledema with grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy. Vomiting can be a sign of raised intracranial pressure. A patient can have chest discomfort or pain which may be due to myocardial ischemia or aortic dissection. Dyspnea can be present due to pulmonary edema. If there is hypertensive renal involvement there can be hematuria and decreased urine output. One should look for a past history of hypertension, any neurological events in the past, cardiac illness, renal issues. If it's a pregnant lady, we could be dealing with preeclampsia bar eclampsia. A recent stoppage of antihypertensive agent, especially clonidine, or a patient who has been on long term beta blocker should be looked into. Use of drugs that produce a hyperadrenic state, such as cocaine, amphetamines, phenylcyclidine, or MAO inhibitors. On examination, we look at the pulse rate, ideally in both uh, pulse in both the limbs, blood pressure in both arms and legs if possible, fundus examination, cardiovascular examination especially for S3, S4, JVP, edema, respiratory system examination specifically for pulmonary edema features like basal crepitations, neurological system examination for neurodeficits, it can be a focal or a generalized neurodeficit. Investigations, if you are suspecting a cardiac involvement, we look for ECG, cardiac biomarkers and a bedside echo, a chest x-ray. If renal involvement is suspected, urinal analysis and a renal function test, electrolytes, random blood sugar, a CT or an MRI of the brain if you are suspecting a neurological involvement. If you are suspecting aortic dissection, a CCT or MRI of the chest or transesophageal echo. When you come to the treatment, the choice of the agent and the blood pressure goal varies according to the specific hypertensive emergency. Now when we are talking about the treatment of hypergen hypertensive emergency, a concept called as autoregulation should be kept in mind. 
the autoregulation is responsible for maintaining the perfusion of the organs when the patient has high blood pressure. If we rapidly reduce the blood pressure, this autoregulation is disrupted and the perfusion can be impaired. So the usual target is a mean arterial pressure should be reduced gradually by 10 to 20 percent in the first one hour and 5 to 15 percent over the next 23 hours. Now there are some exceptions. The major exceptions are the acute phase of an ischemic stroke. During this time the blood pressure is usually not lowered unless the blood pressure is more than 185 by 110 millimeter mercury if you are planning for reperfusion that is thrombolytic therapy or not more unless the blood pressure is more than 220 by 120 if you are not planning for reperfusion. That is you do not reduce the blood pressure unless it is more than 220 by 120 if you are not planning for thrombolytic therapy. In acute aortic dissection, the systolic blood pressure should be rapidly lowered. Unlike in the other hypertensive emergencies, you rapidly lower to a target of 120 systolic blood pressure of 100 to 120 millimeter mercury over ideally over 20 minutes to reduce the aortic shearing forces. The third uh, exception is intracerebral hemorrhage. Now in a patient with aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, the gold systolic blood pressure is less than 160 millimeter mercury or a mean arterial pressure less than 110. While in a case of spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage, the goal is aggressive reduction. If the patient's blood pressure is systolic blood pressure is between 150 to 220, you target 140 millimeter mercury. And if the systolic blood pressure is more than uh, more than 200, 220, you target 140 to 160. Now, when with hypertensive encephalopathy, it is aggressive reduction of blood. Uh, sorry, it is hypertensive emergency encephalopathy. It is gradual reduction of blood pressure. Which are the common agents used for the treatment of hypertensive emergency? Nitrates are the group of agents that are commonly used for the treatment of hypertensive emergency. Under this come nitroprusside and nitroglycerin. They provide nitric oxide that induces vasodilation of both arterioles and veins. The, coming to nitroprusside, nitroprusside acts within very fast action. It is usually within few seconds, not more than one minute. Its effect disappears within 10 minutes of stopping the drug. It can produce a sudden and a drastic drop in blood pressure. Hence, one has to be uh, intensive monitoring should be done when one is administering nitroprusside. The usual dosage is 0.25 to 0.5 microgram per kg per minute we up to a maximum dose of 8 to 10 microgram per kg per minute. Now we do not use this dose for a long period, this 8 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute is not used for more than a few minutes because of the risk of cyanide toxicity. It should not be given to pregnant women, patients with Leber's optic atrophy or patients with to tobacco amblyopia. It should be avoided if possible in patients with impaired renal function, acute myocardial infarction, coronary artery disease or severe because of its dose, re dose related reduction in the perfusion. Because it is a vasodilator, it can increase the blood flow to the brain and thereby elevate intracranial pressure. So it is ideally avoided in neurological emergencies. Next is nitroglycerin. It can be used in, in all the conditions where nitroprusside is used, especially in patients with symptomatic coronary artery disease and those patients with hypertension following CABG. The initial dosage is 5 micrograms per minute up to a maximum of 100 micrograms per minute. The onset of action is within 2 to 5 minutes while the duration of action is 5 to 10 minutes. The common side effects are headache, tachycardia and hypoxemia along with nausea along with nausea and flushing methemoglobinemia has been reported in patients who are receiving the agent for more than 24 hours another commonly used agent nowadays is labitalol it is a combined beta and alpha blocker it's got a rapid onset of action within less than five minutes its action starts it can be given as a series of iv bolus injections or a con or as a constant dose infusion if you are giving as bolus, the bolus dose is 20 mg initially followed by 20 to 80 mg every 10 minutes to a total dose of 300 mg. The infusion rate is, if you are giving, giving it by infusion, the rate is 0.5 to 2 mg milligrams per minute. It should be avoided in patients with COPD, asthma, heart failure, bradycardia or greater than first degree heart block or patients with greater than first degree heart block. 
it should not be used without prior adequate alpha blockade in patients with hyperadrenergic states such as pheochromocytoma or cocaine or methamphetamine overdose. Metoprolol. IV metoprolol can be used during hypertensive emergency. The dose is 1.25 to 5 mg followed by 2 to 15 mg, 2.5 to 15 mg every 3 to 6 hours. The onset of action is within 20 minutes. The duration of action is 5 to 8 hours. It can produce bronchus spasm. It is useful especially in patients with myocardial infarction and perioperative hypertension. One should avoid it in acute decompensated heart failure. Enalaprilat is the intravenous active form of the commonly used uh, ACE inhibitor enalapril. The hypotensive dose uh, response is unfortunately unpredictable. It usually depends on the plasma volume and the plasma renin activity of the patient. Hypovolemic patients and patients with high plasma renin activity are those who are more likely to be associated with excessive hypotensive response. Enalapralite dosages 1.25 to 5 mg which can be given every 6 hours, every 6 hourly. The onset of action is within 15 minutes and the duration of action ranges from 12 to 24 hours. It is contraindicated in pregnancy, severe renal artery stenosis and severe hyperkalemia. Now coming to some of the less commonly used drugs in hypertensive emergency, one is hydrazine. It is a direct arteriolar vasodilator. At present, the use is primarily limited to pregnant women. The, it is given as a dosage of IV bolus 10 mg with a maximum dose being 20 mg. The fall in the blood pressure can be sudden and begins within, it can be sudden but usually begins within 10 to 30 minutes and lasts for 2 to 4 hours. Precautions are needed in patients with underlying coronary artery disease or aortic dissection and a beta blocker should ideally be given concurrently to minimize the reflex sympathetic stimulation. Fentolamine. It is a non-selective alpha blocker. Its use is primarily for the treatment of severe hypertension due to increased catecholamine activity. Examples are pheochromocytoma and tyramine injection in a patient being treated with an MAO inhibitor. The, it is given as an IV bolus of 10 to 15 mg every 5 to 15 minutes as necessary and it can be converted in the later stages to oral phenoxybenzamine. To summarize, hypertensive emergency is a condition where you have high blood pressure with signs and symptoms of acute ongoing target organ damage. One should differentiate between emergency and urgency because of the setting of treatment, the modalities of treatment and the goals of the treatment. Autoregulation should not be forgotten in a patient with hypertensive emergency that is rapid reduction of blood, blood pressure in a hypertensive emergency should be avoided in unless in certain situations like acute, like ayo, acute aortic dissection, in certain types of intracerebral hemorrhage and during an acute phase of an ischemic stroke you do not reduce it unless like I mentioned earlier, two indications. Now, what is the goal? 10 to 20 percent in the first half one hour, that is gradually, and 5 to 15 percent over the next 23 hours. Thank you.